Tuhia ki te rangi, tuhia ki te whenua, tuhia ki te nākau o te tangata. Ko te mea nui, ko te aroha, ti hei mauri ora. Tēnā koutou e te whānau o Social Service Providers Aotearoa. Ngā mihi ki ngā mana whenua o tēnei rohe, taranaki whānui tēnā koutou katoa. Kā nui te aroha mō tō koutou manawa nui ki te hui hui mai, ki te hāpai i ngā kaupapa e pa ana ki tēnei kōrero o tērā. Aroha mai, tēnei hui. E hāra ahau i te tangata mohio ki te kōrero o tērā e tika ana ki a mihi atu ki a mihi mai. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora koutou katoa. Talofa, mā lō, taloha ni, ni hao. Massive greetings to all of you. It is such a pleasure to be here. Um, at the end of a really outrageously exciting collaboration with some um, people who I'll introduce in a moment. Um, but first of all, I just really want to acknowledge the, um, the social service providers, Aotearoa Fano, who I see in strength across the room here. You guys do such important work. And it's lovely to be um, part of this hui, so thank you so much for having us. Um, I think there's something to acknowledge here about relationships and collaboration, um, and I think the, um, the concentric circles that stretch out from this room out beyond into um, the wider Wellington region and then out beyond into the rest of Aotearoa are, um, are something important for us to, to think about at the beginning of this session. Um, we have planned for you a pretty exciting, um, interactive, uh, and um, I think challenging, inspiring, um, and active uh, set of um, provocations for you, really, to consider. So um, you'll hear the voices of young people, and you'll also hear stories that will equip you to go back and make change in your places and spaces with your communities, with your whānau, with your tamariki, um, your taiohi, and the, the wider, wider um, environments that you work in. So I want to throw down a challenge at the outset to all of you, um, to listen deeply, um, to be open-hearted uh, and brave, to allow yourself to be challenged and inspired by what, you, what, by what you hear, but also to take this, what is offered up this afternoon, not just in our session, but actually more widely across the space of this conference, and use it um, in your work, uh, w where you work. Um, the opportunity afforded us by a gathering of this kind is, a, is something that is precious and um, and should be valued by each of us. I'd like very much to um, mihi to the, and introduce the Voice Whakarongo Mai team. Um, and we have the pleasure of, uh, of hearing first from them, from Renee Porter, from Sam Davis, and from Mana williams Eid. So I, with, with all that as kind of the foundations laid out for you, the, our afternoon together, I will hand over um, to Renee to take over. Hi, my name is Renee. Um, it was about 11 years ago that I stood on a stage in front of many like you um, and spoke about my story of being in child, youth and families care. Um, it was the 10th ACAN conference where myself and three other young people united at the Michael Fowler Centre here in Wellington in 2006. And we're able to start having the voice of young people in care be heard. These voices had been collated through a youth council back then, and the four of us were part of and then asked to present at the, at the conference. Together within the youth council, we had identified four important topics, stigma, rights, resilience, and stability. I spoke about being stigmatised for being in the care system, the old child family, child youth and family service, and how this affected basic things like attending school. Back then it was shocking for many people to hear and that this was happening to our young people in care. 
It wasn't heard of and it wasn't being acknowledged. However, this was quite normal for most of us. So fast forward a few years and our voices became amplified. The voices of young people and children also grew in numbers. More and more of us started speaking out and more and more people wanted to hear us. This led to the 2013 VOC, where we made a call for action. In 2015 through to 2016, the Youth Advisory Panel was then formulated and sat with the Minister of Social Development, Minister Anne Tolley. From 2016 till, till this year, 2017, another panel was formulated, which I had the privilege of being a part of with five other young people either still in care or care experienced. The panel was called Te Whanau Aroha and also sat with Minister Tolly. Many changes you see today with Oranga Tamariki were because of these two panels working with the Minister and informing her directly about what needed to happen for change to be seen and felt. This gave a small group of us a voice. At 17 years old, I never thought I'd be here I, still, I was still at high school and still trying to figure out what may happen to me after leaving my care home. I stood on a stage and gave children and young people a voice to be heard. That day made me realise that I would continue on the journey of trying to understand what happened with me and my younger, my younger sister still in care, or while in care. At that voice, at, and that voices of young people and children needed to be continued to be heard. I decided to study and became a qualified social worker so that I would see firsthand what happened to me and my sister. But also be the difference for at least one child, one young person, that they would get the opportunity to also speak up and be heard. I wanted to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Voice Whakarongo Mai launched on April 1st this year as an independent NGO as a result of the high need for young people's voices to be heard. This is the first service of its kind in New Zealand. This means that 5,600 young people in care will finally be given their voice. I currently sit on the Voice Whakarongo Mai Youth Council so I can continue mentoring our young people the way I was mentored and encouraged to speak up 11 years ago. I could have stayed silent. Many young people could have too. But we stood up and stood out, which, was, which has made the person I am today. We are the voice of young people. Today we stand here as the past, the present and the future of young people in care. And I am voice. So I'd like to introduce Sam Davis. I am Sam. I am the present. I am a reflection of what can happen when you invest in hope. My experience being in the care system has really impacted my life both positively and negatively. My opinion of being in the care system is that you're forgotten. You feel like a child that your parents didn't want. When I was in the system every morning I woke up, oh sorry, every morning when I woke up I would be outside the front door of the house I was staying in waiting to see if that was the day that I would be collected, moved and placed into another house. Where? I don't know. When I was moved from place to place, I didn't know where I was going, who I was staying with, or even when my next meal was. Some of the time that was spent in a glass room waiting for a home, sometimes for hours. Most children go through this. My voice has mattered, and it has meant a real change for those that follow. I was the voice of 2013. I turned 17 in 2013 and challenged the Minister on what it meant for me to be discharged from care at 17. The challenge young people in care faced when leaving child, youth and family at the age of 17 is that they are too young to sign any legal documents without a guardian. If the young person's parents are not involved in their life, I now ask a simple question. Who is the legal guardian of the child to sign a legal document, for example, a tenancy agreement? And that's for basic housing. 
My voice and my story contributed to the age of care being raised to 18 in Aotearoa. Now, at being 18, you can start sign a document for your own housing. I am the different lens you must look through. I am the care experienced person who struggles with mental health. I was diagnosed with BPD, also known as Borderline Personality Disorder, in 2013. I was also diagnosed with PTSD, also known as Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. I am only 21 years old and living with these disorders have had their challenges and have challenged me in, in, in many ways, but I am proof this does not define me. I can now be proud to say I am currently not medicated and haven't been on medication for two months. The voices of young children in care matter to me and they should matter to you, as this is our only way of creating change. Through the voices of young children in care, I am voice. I would like to introduce Mana Williams Eid. Kia ora everyone. Ka pūte ruha, ka hau te rangatahi. Now that whakatoki means um, the, new, the old net is cast aside while the new net goes fishing. And I suppose for all intents and purposes, Oranga Tamariki and Voice Whakarunga Mai is the new net and we've come from not having an advocacy service for young people and also having child, youth and family. And so I guess my story starts um, in a similar way to other young people in care. In 1997, when I was eight months old, I was um, taken out of the care of my parents and um, uh, actually, thankfully, put into the care of a really awesome, um, really awesome family who at the age of 12, when I was 12 years old, um, finally adopted me, which was really lucky for me. But unluckily, unlucky for, I guess, my sister, my little sister and I, we were split up when, I was, when, when we were babies. And um, only last year, um, so sort of 16, 17 years later, have we actually been brought back together after um, sort of 60 or 70 placements that she's been in. So that's kind of not a good enough representation for the system at all. And I just want to kind of acknowledge some of Anya's um, challenges to you guys, actually, to kind of sit on, sit, on, um, sit on that challenge to how can you actually change that in your workplaces and what you're doing? How can you make it so that those situations and scenarios never happen? And I guess for me it was having a social worker who actually knew my family. She knew, who I, she knew who, my, who my family was in the community and was able to connect the dots and put me with the right people. And so now, thankfully, without that, I don't know where I would be today. So that's, that's a really amazing thing. When I was 16 years old, I was asked if I wanted to become part of a youth advisory panel. So I was asked by some people at the Office of the Children's Commission if um, I'd like to be a part of a youth advisory panel. And um, I said, yeah, I would love to be. But um, unfortunately, I wasn't successful, and I was kind of salty about it. So they asked me, they asked me the year later, and, and I was like, oh, OK, I'll, I'll do it this time. I guess I'll say yes. And um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to be a part of uh, an advisory panel of seven people, including Renee, called Te Whanau Aroha, which translates to love family, or love whanau. So I guess. Voice Whakarunga Mai, um, some of the things that um, Te Whanau Aroha has been representing, so the voices of young people, are consistent with other services such as Voice Whakarunga Mai. And so there has been a journey so far with uh, young people all being involved in the design and um, the, the construction. And now thankfully we have uh, started a youth council, um, but also um, have young people on the board of trustees, including myself, which I'm really lucky to be a part of. But I guess it's not so much the luck, it's more about, you know, not looking at this as, an, as a token expression. It's not, it's not, oh yeah, we've got a young person on the board of trustees. But actually, no, we've got a young person who's quite loud on the board of trustees, lucky them. So I guess for young people in the future, um, 
you know, the likes of me, Renee, Sam, and there are so many others. You also saw Tapua. You know, th those young people um, are here to stay, and we're going to make sure that no matter where this goes next, um, that it's on the straight and narrow. And one of the cool parts about that is actually being on the Board of Trustees, but also having young people on the Board of Trustees, we can be a part of um, interventions such as selecting a, a chief executive. And I'm really proud to say that last week, or the week before, we actually hired a chief executive, um, which was absolutely amazing. So, and the young people, including myself, were able to be on the panel uh, um, deciding who would be the right, right candidate. And so, you know, there's some of those small things. But as I say, even with the legislation of Oranga um, Tamariki, it's been a long process. One of the things that obviously for me I felt quite passionate about was ensuring that young people, um, brothers and sisters, were kept together. And I told Minister Tolly this and I explained her my story. And um, I was fortunate enough last month to be able to sit inside Parliament and actually watch the legislation go through, ensuring that young people are kept together in, in their families. So the impact is real. The impact is real. And it's these stories that keep on coming through that actually will help make sure that that happens. You know, something that Tim, who works at Voice, said, well, maybe not, I won't share this slide, and I heard him say it before, was it was an image of rocket science and then saying no, because it's not rocket science. It's, it's children. It's like children's ministry. Who would be to be asked than the people who use it, which is the young people? And it changes their life if it doesn't go right. And so that's kind of why, you know, I am in a position where I am able to be here today, but not many people are. Not many people have that voice to do so. And so I think if we continue to encourage that in going forward and moving in the future, that's what Voice Whakarong Mai will do. That's what Voice Whakarong Mai stands for. The voices of young care experience. And so I think moving forward, if we all challenge ourselves and say, well, how can we actually, how can we actually make sure that we are making the best decisions for these young, young people, these young rangatangi, using the new net? And that's how. We listen to their stories, we see what they have to say, and we do something about that. Anyway, thank you very much, guys.